Jen friends, I'm Major Gaurawari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. China English. made its money from the US and Europe. Bottom line. China made its money because of contract manufacturing and theft of intellectual property rights. That's Ace Keep Anju with you. Alright? We don't want her. Please keep her with you. Also, I would request you, please take Seema back with her four kids. Keep her with you. Jen friends, I'm Major Gaurawari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. You know, China in a statement had claimed that Prime Minister Modi and Xi Jinping, when they met in Bali the last time, they had reached a consensus on taking their bilateral ties further. Now, China is afraid of two, three things. First of all, what China is afraid of is companies leaving China and coming to India or going outside China. And they know that the center of gravity is slowly shifting to India. And I will tell you why. There are a lot of Indians who discuss this and debate this because we are a free society and uh, people of all persuasions and all mindsets like to come together and, you know, we are an argumentative lot and good for us. I think we should be. So there are uh, various opinions and many agree with the government, many disagree. So the thing is that, you know, we are still very far away from China and China is uh, miles and miles ahead in terms of manufacturing and in terms of economy. And that statement in itself is correct. There is no doubt about that statement. I agree. I've been to China. I've seen what China has done. I think it's fantastic and I think uh, we need to work harder to catch up and it will be a long grueling road before we do catch up with China. It's not going to be easy at all. Having said that, let me tell you how the economic miracle in China unfolded and I'm going to say this in one minute and tell you in one minute. I've said this before, but it bears repetition. China made its money from the US and Europe. Bottom line. China made its money because of contract manufacturing and theft of intellectual property rights. That's it. Yes, cheap labor base. Yes, an ecosystem, all that. But it was the Americans and the Europeans that gave them contracts, gave the Chinese company contracts to manufacture. Everyday things that you and I see, the brands, mostly they're made in China. Not all, but mostly they're made in China. Now, what has happened is slowly and slowly, America is trying to put legislation in place. I'm not saying they have, I'm saying they're trying to put legislation in place by which it will become very difficult to give orders to Chinese companies. And India is taking full advantage, right? Now this legislation may happen, may not happen. It may take a lot of time because Wall Street is protesting against this legislation and Wall Street is saying that our profits will take a hit. So I have often said this and many business people disagree with me, top corporate guys disagree with me because for them the motive is profit and for me the motive is national security. We tend to think differently. Not to say that their motive is, you know, uh, uh, I want to downgrade their motive. It's just that our thinking is different. They are right the way they think, I'm right the way I think. You see, uh, what happens is that uh, it is Wall Street that strengthened China. It is Wall Street that made the Chinese 10 feet tall. It is Wall Street and the greed of Wall Street that today uh, when the national security document of the United States of America is revealed and it's discussed in the open, China comes out as the main threat to the USA. When did China become the main threat to the USA? When? When without thinking, right? Americans and Europeans like to talk about democracy. They love to talk about freedom of expression. They love to talk about freedom of press. They love to talk about equality. They love to talk about so many things. But when it comes to money, where does all that go? Where does democracy go when it comes to money? You see, China said we are not a democracy. We don't want to be a democracy. We don't believe in freedom of press. We don't believe in the freedom of an individual. We don't believe in any of these things that most of the Western societies believe in. But we will give you money. So the West said, great. If you're going to save us good amount of money, God bless you. We don't need democracy in China. So they gave them all that money. Now, this is exactly what is happening now. China has become a big problem. China became a problem for India also, but the Indian army pushed back and the Indian army is the only army in the recent past in the world that has fought against the Chinese army. There is no other army. The Americans have not fought against the Chinese. Nobody else. We have fought against the Chinese and we have taught Chinese a lesson that they will remember for a very long time. Now, coming back to the point, they said that we have an understanding between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping in Bali. When NSA Ajit Doval went and met Wang Yi, who is now the foreign minister of China, the previous one was sacked because he disappeared with his girlfriend. Now, when uh, they went and met, you know, and recently they met in Johannesburg, Friends of BRICS, there was a summit, Friends of BRICS. So they met there and there 
you know, NSA Ajit Doval told his Chinese, you know, uh, I wouldn't say counterpart because the Chinese counterpart in India would be uh, Dr. S. J. Shankar. But when the NSA spoke, he said that you have broken trust. Yeah, that trust has been eroded. And I think in diplomatic language, it's a big slap on China's face because that is how diplomats speak. They speak in very uh, all diplomats across the world, except Pakistani diplomats. Every other diplomat, they'll speak in very measured terms. They're very measured. They, 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 they calculate exactly what they're saying and what, what import it will have or what, what uh, gravity it is supposed to have while because they're communicating their, their country's policies to the next person. So they have to be very careful. Not one, you know, syllable out of place. It can't happen. But when the NSA goes and says that trust has been eroded, because what China wants is, I'll tell you what, China wants to get India on its side so that this whole exodus of companies from China to India stops. Number one, trade between India and China, which is at 125 billion US dollars, right, gets doubled or trebled or quadrupled or whatever, it reaches 500 billion dollars or whatever. And India compromises on the line of actual control. This is what China wants. What India wants is something else. First, India says back off. India says back off. And you know why China is trying to compromise and China is trying to make these overtures and China is trying to say that let's become friends and let's do, you know why? All this is because of economics. All this because, you see, when Apple says that we are starting to manufacture in India, it's a fine, okay, that's all right. When Tata says, I'm going to make Apple phones. It's like somebody throwing a glass of very cold water on the Chinese face. It's a wake-up call. Now you have Tatas who have come in with their tremendous wealth, tremendous experience, tremendous exposure. Right? And they come in and they say, that, okay, we are going to do this now. Now suddenly, China is on the defensive. When Prime Minister Modi meets Elon Musk, Elon Musk says, I'm a huge Modi fan. And he says that as, as soon as it is humanly possible, I'm going to go to India and I'm setting up a factory in India. And then they say that, a Tesla car is going to be worth what? Between 20 to 20 to 24 lakhs in India, right? So this is a mid-level car, Tesla, the world's finest EV brand. All right, a premium brand available for so less in India. All these things are making the Chinese jittery. And this is a small little thing. There are so many things that are happening. So many things, you know, India actually said no. We covered this in the Chanakya Dialogues English sometime back, I think three, four days back. India said no to a billion dollar investment from BYD. BYD is that EV company, you know, I was uh, indirectly associated with, uh, with BYD in the sense that I used to work for an Indian company, an Indian company which was headquartered in Singapore and I was sent to China to study the BYD model. In fact, a whole team went, not me alone, there were five, seven of us who had gone, we went to their factory and we saw how they were scaling up, etc. They were doing a pretty fine job. But Prime Minister Modi and his cabinet said no to BYD, which means that we don't want Chinese expanding their footprints inside India. And this is exactly the message that NSA Ajit Doval gave to Wang Yi, the Chinese foreign minister, and said, boss, you know, maybe you're not welcome. Stay back. First, solve this line of actual control because you cannot have a tense or a stressed out situation along the line of actual control and say that, okay, it's business as usual. You know, we're doing hundreds of billions of dollars of trade and that's all fine. And let the soldiers die. Who cares about them? No, we care about our soldiers and nothing is going to be normal till you behave yourself. And this is what China does not like at all. Now, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, in, in another news from Pakistan, and this is really funny, uh, Ayaz Sadiq. Ayaz Sadiq is the guy who at one point in time, if you remember when Avinandan was captured, taken POW by the Pakistanis, he was the one who said that, he was the one who made those very famous uh, you know, uh, uh, revelations on the floor of the Pakistani parliament, the National Assembly and said that, you know, the Indians are going to attack at nine o'clock. And this is what the Pakistani foreign minister and the Pakistani army chief told me. Army chief that time was uh, Kamar Javed Bajwa and the foreign minister was Shah Mahmood Qureshi. And they told me that, uh, you know, or I saw them, they were shaking and they're, they, were, they were sweating and they were shaking, their legs were shaking. And same guy. Now he says that, while Shaiba Shari was begging for loans in front of the head of the IMF, literally crawling at her feet and saying, please give me money, please give me money. You know, at that point in time, two Pakistani ministers, women, were actually reading ayats of the Quran and praying to God that, God, please help us. Please get us loans. 
this is uh, this is this is a fabulous story this is a fabulous story and uh, he says it with so much of pride that you know we, we we begged for loans and we got money and this is a matter of great honor for pakistan and they were reading quranic ayats and both of them both these ladies were at it yeah maryam aurangzeb was one and there was another lady there and uh, they they were reading uh, quranic ayats and they were reciting them and they had their eyes closed and they were holding hands and they were saying that allah please give us money please give us money and yeah sure enough they got money but uh, you know to tell the story i think is a matter of great shame because you know i'm sure even allah wants pakistan to be financially independent you know because they never ask pakistanis never say to allah that please give us financial independence please give us that strength so that we can be a proud people we can be a financially independent people that we don't beg they always say allah give us money they never say make us capable so that we can work hard and we can innovate and we can be world beaters they never say that pakistan is allah give us money and here are two pakistani cabinet ministers begging so here's the comedy two pakistani cabinet ministers both women you know begging from allah and the pakistani prime minister begging from the head of the imf two beggings going on simultaneously this is the comedy that recently happened in pakistan narrated beautifully by uh, ayaz sadik Please take a look at this video. IMF के साथ डील किस तरह हुई वजीर आजम और आई एम एफ के सरबराह के दरमियान क्या गुफ्तु हुई नून लीग के रहन अयाज सादिक ने सब बता दिया अयाज सादिक का कहना था की पेरिस में होने वाली अहम मीटिंग के दौरान वजी अजम शहबाज शरीफ ने जब बात शुरू की तो आई एम एफ के सरबराह ने शिकायत के ढेर लगा दिए इसी दौरान वजीर आजम के वफ्त में शरीक मैंने श्री रहमान और मरियम औरंगजेब ऐसी कहा जितनी आयतें और दुरूद शरीफ पढ़ सकती है पढ़ ले हमारा रब पाकिस्तान के लिए आसान यहाँ पैदा करेगा लेकिन रहनुमा अयाज सादिक का कहना था कि इसके बाद एकदम आईएमएफ एम की सरबरा कहने लगी कि वजीर आजम साहब अगर ये काम कर लें तो मैं आपके लिए पैसे इकट्ठे कर लूंगी मैं डोनर से बात करके दो बिलियन डॉलर्स जमा करके दूंगी इन्होंने बताया कि अगले दिन फिर शहबाज शरीफ की आईएमएफ की सरबरा से बात हुई और वहां से पैगाम भेजा गया कि इस मामले को हल किया जाए इसके बाद दो रोज तक वजी खजाना इसहाक डार की टीम इसी मामले आरोप काम करती रही इसके बाद जाकर मामला तय पा गए Pakistan that Indian woman Anju who had left her kids her husband her in-laws her parents everybody gone to Pakistan she said she is going visiting she went and met a boyfriend apparently she is converted to Islam Anju's name is now Fatima she is married to this guy called Nasrullah and Pakistanis welcomed Anju to their country in the only way they know how with a bang right so there was a suicide blast in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa where Anju has gone in the first place and married this guy Nasrullah okay and they welcomed uh, you know anju to pakistan with a bang one guy called adnan afridi who was a police officer he was killed in the suicide blast god bless his soul and uh, that's how anju was welcomed into pakistan so anju i hope you have a great time and i would like to request with folded hands uh, pakistani authorities please keep anju with you all right we don't want her please keep her with you also i would request you please take seema back with her four kids keep her with you all right uh both of them are better off in pakistan we don't need such people so god bless you take them so ladies and gentlemen with this i come to the end of the video if you like this video please press like subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai